Hello, what's happening, everyone? Hope you're having a great day. I'm so excited to be here today. I do want to remind you that you can catch me live here every week at this time on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. Twitter X these days, right? So also my handle for YouTube is right here, MJS Photography. Check me out. I'll be here all the time on YouTube. It stays up here forever. So come back, check me out here all the time as I share some lessons and some stories coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. If you hear me pause, I'm taking my green tea as I need right now, actually. Good for your health. So today I've got a question for you. Have you seen that new show on Netflix called Sanctuary? I'm hooked. I mean, I'm hooked. And I'm going to share a little bit today for you guys about that. So let me just dive right into this. This show, I think, is incredible. Um, it's called Sanctuary on Netflix. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Absolutely. I love watching uh, great shows and movies, of course. It's all about that. But today I want to go a little bit into Sanctuary to hopefully open some doors for you there if you don't know about this show or what it's all about. So Sanctuary is about the world of sumo wrestlers. And of course, it takes place here in Tokyo. So when I saw that, I'm like, oh, let me check it out. I wasn't really into sumo wrestling, to be honest. But this show, it got my attention. So I had to dive in. And since I live here in Tokyo, I want to go to the area where it all happens. Rogoku is the sumo area here in Tokyo. If you go there, you'll see these statues the moment you walk into this area. If you come out of the, of the train station, you'll see these, these statues all around Rogoku of sumo champions. Uh, what you see here is uh, what a champion looks like after they've won uh, all the sumo wrestling uh, events for that season. Kind of cool, right? So in the show, Sanctuary by Netflix, you see this happening a lot. And I'll be honest, before I had no idea what this was, but it's called uh, uh, Shiko, Shiko Fumi. And this is really the foundation of sumo wrestling, which I did not know before. And I went to watch them practice. And when I went to watch them practice, I had no idea what they were doing. But thanks to the show Sanctuary on Netflix, now I do. It's super cool to have this, this information because now I see it all differently. When I first went to watch them practice, they were doing this for a long time. This is the foundation of building a strong body that a sumo wrestler needs to become grand champion. And you can't get there without it. Kind of cool seeing this and now knowing about this, I was like before, what are they doing? But this, uh, the Shiko Fumi is really the foundation of sumo wrestling and it helps build muscles that they need for this sporting event. Kind of cool. And yes, they do other types of training as well, like push-ups. And when you're, you know, this weight doing push-ups is much harder than for the average person. So they're doing the push-ups, they're doing all this working out. And now I have a deeper appreciation for it. Yes, I'm there taking pictures all the time and watching them. But after watching the show, I'm going back again to shoot more pictures because now I am really intrigued into watching. As a matter of fact, I plan to go back tomorrow to take place and, and videotape and photograph them practicing again. Kind of cool to see. But now that I have this, this, this background, I'm going to shoot it differently because now I know what every move means and how this practice makes them better, stronger, and more equipped to win their matches. I've got this brand new appreciation for sumo wrestling. And now, as I go back, I do want to shoot differently. 
And it's funny, like when you learn the foundation of everything, you see it differently. So even as photographers, like when we're when we're talking about, you know, uh, photography and the foundation, that's super important. And how they stand, how low they are, makes a big difference right before the match begins. I didn't pay attention to this before watching the show. Now I do. So now I'm like, oh, I want to sh shoot it at a different point of view, lower, so I can really tell who's lowest right before they start and see how that makes a big difference and who has the power and how are they doing all of their exercises. I want to see all that and document that in my pictures now because now I know what it takes and what they're going for when they're practicing. And to see it after knowing, you have brand new eyes. So yeah, maybe you can tell I'm super now into this. I want to go see a match, the whole nine yards. I want to figure out, you know, how you go to a match, what's the process for the whole nine yards. So I went the other day to Rogoku to take pictures of the statues, which we have here now. This is what the champion looks like in real life. Once they become the grand champion, they go through this process of, of, of a ceremony and it's all this pomp and circumstance around it. The Yukozuna grand champion is praised for that whole season. And maybe if they're lucky, they become a statue around Rogoku, who knows? But seeing all this in real life is so exciting for me. As you go to Rogoku and go to the station, you know right away you are in the sumo area. When you walk out of the train station, this is what you see. You don't see this at any other train station, but they have these big banners. They have their handprints, all of this right there. I do want to remind you, I'll be taking questions right after this. So if you have questions, pop them into questions right now. I'll be answering all of them shortly. Now, I was curious, okay, where do they have the matches? Where do they buy tickets? And this day that I went, this is just the other day, people were standing in line early to buy tickets to go see sumo wrestling. I'm like, oh, wow, people are in line early early right behind you that's the, the the stadium where they actually have all the matches you see it from the outside and people are in line to get their tickets for sumo super cool to see so if you haven't watched the show sanctuary netflix check it out now i do want to pause right now and take any questions that you may have uh, and I'm glad to see, I see EKG here. How you doing, man? Good to see you here. Great idea to return. Yes, indeed, it is. Good to have you here. Good to have you all here. If you have any questions about this, definitely pop them in the chat right now. I'm super into sumo wrestling now. Haven't been to a match yet, but I plan to go. Can't wait to get there and dive deeper into it. Because believe it or not, me watching this show is actually going to help me with my photography. And maybe it's going to help you too. As a matter of fact, let's dive into the photography lesson today because I think what I've learned already in watching Sumo is already helping me in photography. So for those who are watching for the first time, my name is Matthew Jordan Smith. I've been a professional photographer for now over 35 years. I'm also a Nikon ambassador, proud Nikon ambassador. I'm always shooting the latest, greatest Nikon gear. Right now, that's the Z9 and the Z8. Love those. The pictures you're seeing are all shot with those cameras, as a matter of fact. So let's dive into today's tools. I'm talking about tools of the trade, what we need as photographers. Throughout my career, I've made a living based on using lighting gear. So today I want to take you through some of my favorite lighting gear and how I use it, why I use it, all of that. Lighting does make a big difference. I think lighting is like the foundation of photography. The same way with sumo wrestlers doing their shikufumi, it's the same thing photography. You need that, that, that foundation. You can't skip it. If you do, you end up losing because you don't have all the tools to really get to that next level. 
Lighting is a big part of my career. It's helped me to excel and it can help you to excel as well. But maybe you're thinking about, uh, do I need to learn lighting? It does give you an edge. It does give you a major, major edge in you becoming a better photographer and standing out from everyone else. I recently met a photography photographer who works more in lighting and he was telling me how he's lighting, he's being paid to work as a lighting tech for a whole host of new photographers who don't know lighting and all the work's looking the same. And when I heard him say that, I'm like, okay, people are being hired right now, but will they be hired in the future when you need to really stand out and have a brand as a photographer? That's super important. So one of my favorite lights is this Profoto D2. This is a strobe light lighting unit. And on that strobe, you can put, put many different attachments or modifiers on top of that light. The actual light is the Profoto D2. I have a different attachment on this one right now, but I can put many attachments on it and all those attachments called modifiers modify your light and give you your look. This is a, a D2 1000 Air T, uh, TTL mono, mono head, and I do love this one a lot. But I love using a lot of different types of lights. And I want to give you just a little snippet of what I use. This is not all the lights I use, but this is some of them. So this is a uh, Stella Pro CLX10. This is a constant light. It doesn't flash. Like that first light, that strobe light, it flashes. This one is constant, which means it stays on the entire time and you shoot it based on what you see. A great light to use, easy light to learn how to use. You can use it for both still and video. That first light, the strobe, you can just use that for still only. But this light, still and video, easy to use, great to use. One of my tools that I use all the time. Whew. Now, let's go deeper into lighting. Because I said I use a lot. This one is another type of constant light. But this is an airy sky panel. This is the C30C uh, LED light panel. And I do love this one a lot. I use it. I use all these lights a lot. But right now, I'm using the sky panel in a different way than I've ever used strobe or other types of constant lights. It gives me other advantages that I can use uh, these lights for. Love it. Another tool that you must use when you're using any type of light, be it a strobe or constant uh, of any type, is a color checker passport. This will ensure that you get a neutral colored image without any color fluctuation whatsoever. Um, there are two ways to use it with the color swatches, then also as an old fashioned gray card. Now, x right used to own this company. Now it's now owned by uh, Calibrite. And I still have the old version, but I'm going to get the new version soon because um, you should replace these every few years as well. But when I'm doing my lighting, I go a step further. This is a very entry level, level way of using a, co a color to get your, your color exact. I like to take my sky panel and be even more exact for my color. So I use a sky panel remote. I also use a color meter. I'm not showing a color meter in here because it's a little more up. Um, it's, it's expensive and it's also, it can be a little confusing for other people. So I don't want to show it yet. I'll save that for a separate video where I go deeper into a color meter. But with the color remote for the sky panel, I can dial in any color I want, any color temperature and any color. And lately I've been doing that a lot and having a lot of fun doing it. Like I can change my color. I can read the color. Like here I have my assistant holding a, a light meter, not a color meter, but a light meter to give the exposure as I'm about to shoot. I can fluctuate throughout the shoot and use different colors. Like I did this day a few weeks ago, so I'm shooting a dancer and I want to shoot her in different colors and put it all together, showing all those colors in the movement. 
kind of cool seeing that come together and a lot of fun shooting it with a sky panel. I can't do this with strobe. I can't do this with a simple constant light. This is a more of a, a high-end type of constant light. And I love being able to use my remote to change the color in the split second when I need to. A very cool tool to have. Now, let's get back to just basics. I can also use it as a basic, simple light, like here. This is you learning the foundation, like the sumo wrestlers had the foundation of becoming a great sumo uh, wrestler and hopefully becoming the grand champion. You have to have that foundation, and lighting is the foundation. This is why I made a course on lighting to give you the foundation of lighting. So you can take that and go anywhere you want in your photography. That course is called Photography Lighting Course. Now here, I'm using the sky panel as a simple light, just a constant light. As you see on the table, I have that gray card so I can get just my, my simple color to make it a nice neutral palette. Once I have that, I can concentrate on making great images. That's the foundation of photography, getting a standard color or neutral color and learning about lighting. Once you learn that, you can do anything and really have control over your light and your career. And if you want to, you can bounce all these lights together, use all these lights together to make your light come and stand out. I do love that about all of this and so much more. I do want to remind you at the end, in a few seconds, I'll be taking your questions so you can ask away right now in the chat. I see some coming in right now. I want to get to those in right one second. But for those who want to go deeper and learn, learn more about the foundation of photography, just hit that QR code. It'll take you to the course and you can learn more about it online and so much more. But right now, I want to dive into your questions. So today we've been talking about the tools of the trade. I'm going to be back here every single week to answer more and more of your questions. So we got a question that came in right now from EKG saying, is lighting the most important part of creating your own style? I love that question. I don't think it's the most important part. I think it's an integral part for sure. I think the most important part of creating your own style is first discovering your unique point of view. We all have it. We all have our own thumbprint. There's no two people on the planet who have the same thumbprint. Same in photography. You have your own point of view and you have to discover that. If I could say there's one thing in my career that I wish I knew at the start of my career, it would be that. Understanding your own way of seeing things and then learning how to express that visually with your camera. And what lighting does, lighting helps you expand on that and show your point of view and light it the way you want to feel. Lighting is all about a feeling. Do you want your pictures to feel a certain way? And how do you have control over that feeling? Light gives you that. Learning how to manipulate light, create your mood with light. That doesn't happen through natural light because natural light is going to be whatever you get for the day. Say it's it's been raining here in Japan lately a lot. So on those days, it's overcast, cloudy, and that's a certain type of look. If I'm using only natural light, that's all I got, baby. That's it. But if you want to create a different mood on that day when it's rainy and overcast, but you want a different bright, shiny mood or upbeat mood, that takes lighting and you discovering how to take that light and make your pictures feel and look like you. So yeah, lighting is definitely an integral part. I love that question. Thank you for asking that one today. Please pop any more in that you may have because uh, I'm here for you to ask your questions and share. I'm going to be back here every single week sharing my knowledge and yes, telling a story about 
life here in Japan as a photographer. And of course, that means sharing pictures and stories with you. So come on in, check me out every week at this same time. I'll be here live on any channel you love watching, be it YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, the whole nine yards, Facebook. Uh, I'm all here live every week on this channel for you. So keep those questions coming in. Thank you so much. Time for me to drink my tea for sure. Chill for a minute. Absolutely need it. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank you for letting me share my joy, which is photography, and share part of my life here in Japan talking about today, talking about sumo and how I'm loving this show, uh, Sanctuary, on Netflix. I think it's super, super cool. All right, everyone. I look forward to seeing you again next week. And next week is going to be super cool. So make sure you do not miss that. I've got a lot to share. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question, EKG. So cool to have everybody here. Love seeing you guys and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.